Hey, what's going on? Hope you're having a shit one. Dude, I've got to show you the craziest shit that happened to me the other week. So I'm just driving along, like, back home after a shoot the other night. And there's, like, this Ford Ute next to me. And he's got a new intake on it so I can hear him spool up. And because I got my new intake on my car, I was spooling up. So we're just having, like, a bit of fun just being dickheads or whatever. Like this. I spool up. I spool up. <laughs> we're laughing about it, we're laughing about it. And then he fucking guns it. And all this power comes down to his wheels and I'm like, and he like starts fishtailing and then hits the brakes to get up to the lights there. And I was like, holy shit. We get to the next set of lights, it's like a four lane road. And so I was on the far left and he was on the middle. There was a van next to us or something, right? I was just like to Zandra, this guy, he's just gonna try and race me straight up. Like he is gonna absolutely flog the shit out of his car. Like, just watch this. Anyway, so I start here. And he's like trying to get traction on this thing. I, I don't even know if that was pushing it for him or whatever, but this guy's making some serious fucking power in his ute. Anyway, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. If you like taking photos of cars, but you feel like your car photography isn't really doing you any justice, you know, you want to try and step it up a notch, you want to try and look more professional, you got to take rolling shots. Now, what exactly is a rolling shot? It's basically you have two cars, you're leaning out one of the cars or the camera car or whatever, and you've got your other car or cars that you're shooting and you're going the same speed as, as each other and you're just taking photos and the whole ground is blurry and stuff. It's kind of like a panning shot, but you're also moving with the subject that you're shooting. You're gonna need three people to do this. You're gonna need a subject to shoot. You're gonna need a camera car and someone to drive that car and you as the person with the camera because you're the one gonna be taking this photo. And to make things a little bit easier, you'll wanna be using a wide lens. This is a 24 to 70, this will do you, or if you have like an even wider lens, like I'm using a 14 mil right now. But ideally what you want is something around 16 to 20 mil. And if your lens has like an image stabilization feature on it, that's even better. Some of the more expensive lenses sort of get it once you start notching up there price tag. To start practicing rolling shots, you want to start off like somewhere kind of quiet, like a dual lane road. So you can quite easily sort of get the other shot and you can go quite slow and you can do this all quite legally. So you want to be starting out at about 30 to 40 kilometers an hour, not very fast at all. So something really easy for you to shoot. And then once you start shooting, there's no real legal way to do it. Um, you can try keep your seatbelt on and lean forward a bit more, but I try and be as safe as possible, put a camera strap on where I can, or, or if I'm holding a gimbal or whatever, I'm holding onto this gimbal with all my strength, so I don't drop anything. But most importantly is your safety. So don't like lean half your body out the window or anything stupid like that. I've seen it before. Luckily, I haven't seen any accidents with it, but it's a really stupid thing to do. And also don't put your mate in the boot or whatever, or don't sit in the boot while you drive because I've done that with Le Mans and we both cop pretty hefty fines for it. So don't do that. And it was really funny. The cop didn't even know what to write the fine as because he'd never seen that before. He was like, you guys are just so fucking stupid. So when it comes to actually taking the photo, a good rule of thumb, you don't have to use this rule, but to start out, this is quite an easy way to get a nice roller shot, is to set your shutter speed to whatever speed your car or your subject is going. Uh, and this works better for kilometers as well. So if your car is traveling at 40 kilometers an hour, which I think is 25 miles, set your shutter speed to one over 40th of a second. And that's gonna give you a nice blurred look. The faster you go, the better, all the way up until one 100th of a second. And then that's where it sort of caps because technically anything under 1 50th of a second is technically a long exposure. The slower you stop down your shutter speed, the more time your shutter is gonna be open for, therefore the more light coming in, therefore the blurrier your shot's gonna become. But to be completely honest, like you can use that rule, but just have a play around with your settings when you're actually doing it to see what kind of works for you. If it's during the day or somewhere where you can just get a lot of light into your camera, I would recommend having an f-stop anywhere between f5.6 to f8. So that way you know you're getting the whole car in focus. But if you're at nighttime, anywhere between f2 to f4, I usually just set my focus mode to the center as well. So you can change around your focus modes. But if you're really struggling, set your set a manual focal length. This is a distance meter on your lens. Not all lenses have it. Some lenses 
connect to the camera and your camera will tell you, like the Sony's will tell you. Otherwise, most lenses will tell you what distance you're shooting at. Um, so maybe just set, manually set your lens to one to two meters so you can shoot the car that's next to you or whatever and that you just lock on that focus mode. So when it comes down to actually getting a nice stable shot, it really comes down to how smooth the road is, how stable your hands are. Ideally what you want is a minivan so you can open up like the roller door on the side and then shoot out of that. A little kind of tip that might help you get a bit more of a stable shot is actually using a camera strap. So let's just pretend I have a camera in front of me right now. So instead of just like holding the camera like this, if you sort of like stretch it out a bit more and sort of lock the camera strap behind your neck, that's gonna kind of give you a bit more of a stable shot. And if anyone plays Modern Warfare here, add me. That's my gamer tag down below. You know how like you're using a sniper and you hold your breath and you're like, <gasps> and your sniper sits more still? Works the exact same for photography. I don't know how you're gonna do all that while you're leaning out the window of a car trying to get a roller shot, but those are two things that can definitely help you get a bit more of a stable shot. Otherwise, just use an entire stabilizer to help you get this shot. So I use a Zy Zion, Zion, Zion Crane, the second one, and I literally just set it up for filming, and then when I'm ready to take photos, flick it over to my photo settings. And then because my camera is on a stabilizer, I'm just literally holding down the shutter and just taking as many photos as I can. I still get bumpy shots here and there, but I'm more likely to get a stable shot. But if you don't have a stabilizer, use the good old camera strap. A couple of problems you might face is actual traffic. Depending on what time you're gonna do this, where you're gonna do this, and what roads you're gonna do this down, traffic may become a huge problem. But I would recommend waiting until peak hour is done or just finding like a dual lane street you can drive down for your subject car and your camera car. But either, yeah, sunrise is a really good time to do it, or generally after peak hour. And the other problem you might face is actually telling your subject driver, the car that you're gonna be shooting, how do you even communicate with them? Because most of the time you're like trying to get them to come forward or stay back or whatever. You can either put them on loudspeaker in your car or connect the Bluetooth or the aux cord or whatever and get them to play their audio through the car so they can hear you a lot more clearly. Or if you have Bluetooth headphones or headphones that connect to your phone, just call them on your phone, put your headphones in, and you'll be able to talk to them while you're shooting. And you can be like, yeah, come forward, go back a bit, stay at this speed, lock your cruise control to 40 Ks an hour or whatever. But that's about it for roller shots. The best way to get out and just learn about roller shots is to go out and try. I did get a few questions when I put this on my Insta story, do you have to have a camera car? No, you actually don't. I shot some roller shots with Mazda when I did like a little ad for their CX-5. I was actually on a skateboard for my, all of those shots. So you can use a skateboard. But before I finish off this video, I do want to give a couple of special mentions to people that actually do really good roller shots. One of them, he's a local boy from Melbourne. His name's Hartnett Media on YouTube. Crazy, crazy fucking videos. Probably the, like world-class rolling shots and world-class video footage as well. Um, there's another guy called Guy with a Camera over in San Francisco. He's really good at them. He's been doing them for a long time. I'm pretty sure he's one of those guys that sits at the back of like a truck or has the boot open or whatever, but he does these like front roller shots, which are really cool. And there's another guy called Alex Penfold from England. And again, world-class photographer, very fucking good at making roller shots work. I hope I did teach you something new today. Maybe leave a like down below or consider subscribing to my channel. With that all said and done, have a shit one.